What's going on everybody, C4 here, and today we are continuing our 2018 draft prep by looking at the top 10 corners in this year's draft class. Now I'm still a little under the weather, I got bronchitis, but uh, I'm so damn bored I need to record something. So this is what we are doing. So as I'm talking right now, I'll pop up the original list that I had. I only did top 5 corners because I kind of grouped the defensive backs all in one video, but the rankings go as follows. I have Isaiah Oliver from Colorado at number five, Denzel Ward from Ohio State at number four, Quentin Meeks of Stanford at number three, Jair Alexander out of Louisville at number two, and Tarveris McFadden out of Florida State at number one. Now this is as of week, mid-season if you will, of the college football season, and ratings have changed drastically, especially more so because I know how the draft field is gonna play out, who's declaring. Um, Let's see from the first one there. Oh, there's a bulb because I do I'm doing ten corners versus I did five So there's a lot more different names and hopefully uh, I can help you guys out if your team is looking for corners as to what guys should they be targeting? Um, before we jump into the official top ten. I have four honorable mentions I, I really do think that there's a lot of talent in this year's cornerback class Maybe not as next last year last year is probably the one of the best cornerback classes I can recall but I think this year is is certainly close. And if you compare maybe the last five drafts, this is probably the second best draft of those five-year period for cornerbacks. So before we jump to the top five, we have four honorable mentions. At number four, we're going with Quentin Meeks from Stanford. Originally was number six, or well, they would number three from my first rankings. The more and more I watched it, I'm kind of questioning his athletic ability. I think he might be more inclined to be a safety, 6'2", 220. Uh, but he's, from, his, from a football standpoint, a football IQ standpoint, I definitely think he's going to make a roster as a rookie. Uh, number three is Kevin Tolliver from LSU, declared early, but I really do like the intangibles, some off-the-field concerns. But, uh, you know, as much as I like to say Florida is DBU, these LSU secondary players have been monsters in the NFL. And I think Tolliver could very well be a next one and could be an absolute value pick in the mid-rounds of the draft. Number two is going to be Brandy, Brandon Faison. From Virginia Tech, great size, 6'2", 200 pounds, good production. Uh, really want to see how well he can test at the combine. Could definitely rise up into my top 10 if he puts up some pretty big numbers. And at number one, it's going to be Anthony Everett from Alabama. Uh, again, pretty good instincts. Size is a little eh. I, I didn't really like a lot of the comparisons that I read around the web to him. It doesn't really line up with the tape. But again, Alabama secondary type player. Let's see how well he tests the combine and we'll reevaluate. But right now, he's just making the honorable mentions. So without further ado, at number 10 for the cornerback rankings 2.0, I have Tarveris McFadden from Florida State. Going from number 1 all the way down to number 10 is pretty rough, but he did not have a good season this year at all at Florida State. Uh, he's six foot two, 200 pounds. On the year, he had 30 tackles and 10 pass deflections. No interceptions, but you gotta remember, in 2016, he led the nation with 8. But uh, the downplay, it really looks like that the, the team there, the coaches at Florida State, didn't really develop a whole lot. He looked, looked a little bit lost out there at times. But anyway, the positives, he has great ball skills, proven production, and he's a really, really good press corner. But the negatives, he's inconsistent. I saw lots of inconsistencies to his plays. Tape in 2016 looked nothing like in 2017. And I don't think Florida really did a whole lot, Florida State, that is, did a whole lot to really change up their schemes or anything like that. So I don't really know why. We don't know what McFadden you're going to be getting. So unless, you know, we got to wait and see with the combine. This is definitely one of the positions that we'll probably will have to reevaluate after the combine because corner can be valuable there. Especially like, like remember just T's Tabor from Florida. Tape, top, top three tape, but his combine was absolutely horrendous. So uh, we may need to revisit it, but McFadden uh, probably could help his stock a little bit there. Um, but uh, ultimately, I don't know what happened between 2017 and 2016. Like I said, I don't think there was a whole lot of changes on the coaching staff. Obviously, now we know with Jimbo gone. But, um, you know, I have to put him at number 10 right now. But he definitely can rise up. Going to number 9, it is going to be Holton Hill from Texas. 6'3", 200 pounds on the season. He had 51 tackles, 2 interceptions, both of which he brought back for touchdowns and 6 pass deflections. Positives of Holton Hill is obviously that size, 6'3", 200. That is, that is great length on the outside. Uh, he's solid in coverage, and he's great in run support. Some people have actually quoted to say that he's going to be the best player this year in run support. Uh, from the cornerback spot. Obviously, with that size, you would figure that he wasn't going to be some softy, you know, in, in Sante Samuel, Dominic Rogers, Cromartie type. Um, but I, I definitely think his tape looked pretty good. Uh, the negatives is off field. Obviously, I think he got kicked off Texas or something like that, got suspended, uh, decided to declare, go to the NFL draft early. I think probably would have helped the stock a little bit to go back. 
uh, and, and you know maybe put in another good full year of work i don't know if there was something serious enough that he would have had to maybe transfer or something like that i'm not i'm a little bit ignorant to that scenario but he definitely has some off field the combine's gonna be interesting a big long rangy guy like that if he could test particularly well could definitely rise up a lot more people's draft boards mine included uh, but until then i think number nine is a good starting spot here for holton hill Going to number eight is going to be Dante Jackson from LSU, five foot eleven, 175 pounds on the season. He had 45 tackles, one interception, and nine pass deflections. We look at Dante Jackson. He has elite speed right there with Denzel Ward. Both these guys are going to be having an absolute track meet at the 40-yard dash if they decide to run it at the combine. Uh, and definitely a slot corner starting out. Definitely has potential to be an outside guy, five foot eleven. I mean, the weight's a little bit of a concern for an outside player, but he has the length to compete for an outside job, but I think because of his skill set, might be more inclined to be a nickel slot corner in the NFL right away. Uh, and that, that kind of goes to his negative, his thin frame. He is very, very small, and he's one of those guys that I don't know really how much more weight he can add on, and ultimately doesn't need to add on more weight if he just wants to stay, and he's fine being a slot corner in the NFL. He's ready to go. Let's go, baby, rock and roll. He's one of those LSU corners. LSU corners uh, very much like, we're gonna keep, keep referring it every time we compliment LSU. Talk about Florida Gators, Florida Gator secondary type players. Uh, both these guys, they always seem to just find a way to you know work in the NFL. And I think Dante Jackson is definitely one of those guys who's going to run a blazing time. Probably will shoot up some guys' draft boards way too much because they overvalue the 40-yard dash time. Um, but, you know, he's, his production is good. I'm very interested, very intrigued to see what Dante Jackson is going to do at the next level. But right now, we're starting him here at number 8. Going to number seven is going to be Duke Dawson from my Florida Gators. Five foot ten, 210 pounds on the season. He had 34 tackles, four interceptions. One of those he was able to bring back for a touchdown and nine pass deflections. When you look at Duke Dawson, he could do everything at a good level. There's nothing that I would say he does truly elite, truly exceptional, which is why we have him at seven. But literally, he can do everything that you ask from him at a good level. You want him to run the slot, he can do it. You want him to be outside, a little bit undersized, still can do it. You want him to tackle, really, really good run support, aggressive type player, great football IQ, great leader. And I think he could start as a slot nickel corner in the NFL day one. Uh, the negative is I, he's average athlete, doesn't really look like he's going to test particularly well at the combine. Not saying he's going to put up T's Tabor numbers, but he's not going to put up something that, I mean, when you look at, like I said, maybe Denzel Ward and Dante Jackson for these these corners that are going to be sub six feet tall. I don't think he's going to be really in that ballpark. His vertical might be pretty good, though. He usually can do and can test a lot of jump balls while he's playing for Florida. Um, but, I mean, I really do like Duke Dawson. I think uh, for a team like maybe the Philadelphia Eagles that could have an opening at nickel corner if they don't want to gamble and put Ronald Darby or Sidney Jones there, uh, he could definitely be a name to look for. And he's for another negative, just because I watched him a lot, he sometimes is penalty prone because he's so aggressive. Can get a little grabby from time to time. He's had a couple bad calls. Um, and on his part, not bad ref calls, just bad mental decisions for the Gators that kind of went his um, went against him, which kind of sucks. But, you know, you can get that cleaned up in the NFL with the right coaching. So right now, Duke is at number seven. Going to number six, it is going to be Mike Hughes from UCF, 5'11", 185 pounds. On the year, he had 49 tackles, four interceptions, one of those he brought back for a touchdown, and 11 pass deflections. When you look at the positives for Mike Hughes, he is very good in press coverage. He's probably one of the better press corners in this year's draft class. He's a very, very good athlete, very intrigued by how well he's going to test at the combine. He's not going to test bad. It's more so how well is he going to test that he could jump up uh, into top five, potentially. And I really do think his best trait that not a lot of people talk about is his run support. For a guy that's not the biggest, definitely not like one of these 6'1", 200-some pound corners. His run support, he's a willing tackler. He's an aggressive tackler, and he's willing to come in and make some plays. He also can do get the job done on special teams as a punt returner. You know, he ticks off a lot of boxes, man. The only real negative is his lack of experience. Only played two years, was a transfer, I think, from North Carolina, if I remember correctly. Uh, definitely could have probably benefited from going back another year, very similar to maybe, say, Holton Hill from Texas. But ultimately, I definitely think Mike Hughes could be one of these guys if he tests as well as some people are thinking at the Combine that could almost be like, yeah, he's going in the first round. It's only to a matter of what team wants and what team wants to make that investment. But for me personally, I have right now as a round two grade that is going to be a guy that has potential to end up starting at some point in his rookie season. Going to corner number five 
It is going to be Jair Alexander from Louisville, 5'11", 195 pounds, only played six games this season in which he got 19 tackles, an interception, and four pass deflections. But looking at his tape from 2016, was very, very good. There's a reason why I originally had him as my number two corner in the draft class. When you look at Jair Alexander, good athlete, great IQ, ball hawk, great production, can play pretty much everything you want him to in the secondary you know the size is not ideal for an outside guy in the nfl but his tendencies and his aggressiveness can definitely make up for it and keep him engaged with some of the bigger corners that he will see the only real negative for jair obviously coming off an injury is really how he how is he gonna look at the combine is he still gonna have that same explosiveness that kind of you know, makes you you know get over maybe the the size limitations he has so he's definitely one of those guys that is a little bit combine dependent on where his value eventually will finish so I'm excited to see how well he's going to test there. But in terms of the positives, it, a lot to like about Jair Alexander, which is why he is cracking the top five. Going to corner at number four, it is going to be Isaiah Oliver from Colorado. Originally was my number five last time. Now he's number four, six foot one, 195 pounds on the season. He had 26 tackles, two interceptions, and 12 pass deflections. When you look at the positives, he's really your height speed. You know, everything you need from a height speed standpoint, very, very fast. He's great in man. He's great in press. Yeah, in zone, but I mean, you know, you can't always get a complete type corner. Um... He's one of those guys that, when you look at the positives, he's a little bit of a project. Don't know if he could start as a rookie. Might be able to start, but it's probably going to be, in my opinion, my incredibly expert opinion, that uh, you wait and see with him. You let him you let him sit for maybe the first half of the season, then you start to ease him in, get him some special packages and stuff like that uh, to get him involved in the game plan later on in the season. When you look at the negatives of Isaiah Oliver, uh, it, it kind of hits home for Philadelphia Eagle fans. He's too aggressive and can bite on routes. The thing that kind of saves him in college is he's so fast. He has great makeup speed, which he will be able to bring that over into the NFL. He is really a great athlete on both sides of the game. Not just he wasn't a great athlete in college in the NFL. He's going to be kind of more average. I think he's going to be a great athlete in both. And, you know, until he's able to refine his technique, anytime you can get a corner that has the makeup speed, like, oh, man, I messed up, but I'm going to be able to go track this guy down. Uh, that, that really does help when you're trying to evaluate talent in the NFL. Because at least you know, if, all right, if you know, he might not be able to get what we're trying to teach him right now. But if he messes up, where this guy here, if he messes up, it's, it's six points going the other way. If he messes up, he probably should be able to track the guy down. So because of that, and, and the positives in the upside, and the fact that he really is a good man in press cover corner right now, uh, I think Isaiah Oliver pretty much has secured a first round draft grade. Going to a corner number three, it is going to be Denzel Ward from Ohio State. 5'10", 190 pounds on the season. He had 37 tackles, 2 interceptions, and 15 pass deflections. I'm going to tell you, I have PTSD with Denzel Ward. The positives, you look at any highlight tape, you're like, yes, 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 this guy looks sick. The positives, excellent technique, very, very good athlete. Might have a chance to run the fastest 40 time. It's going to be a track meet, like I said, between him and probably Dante Jackson from LSU. And he definitely could be an elite nickel corner in the NFL. I mean, it's... It's still kind of faux pas nowadays to really invest a massive draft pick, a first round pick, to get a slot corner. But I mean, slot corners, it's pretty much, you know, one of the most standard packages teams run now on defense. Like, hell, again, I, I keep referring to the Philadelphia Eagles because they're my team, but we ran so much nickel corner. That's why Patrick Robinson had the kind of year he had this year. He's probably going to get paid big time bucks somewhere in free agency. So um, I think he definitely has the athletic ability to play on the outside. Obviously, with that size, it's a little bit of alarming. But I think if you really want, if you value the nickel position, he is definitely the best nickel in this year's draft class and could start day one as a nickel corner. Uh, the negatives is, like I said, is he going to be an outside corner? Do you really want to invest a really high pick on a guy that might not pan out there? Yeah, you got to think about that. And my PTSD is the game against Indiana. Simi Cobbs torched him. Simi Cobbs, I think, is an incredibly talented wide receiver. I think I'm at, I had him at number five or number six in my wide receiver rankings. He's, it's just a bad match. I'm a 5'10 corner going up against a 6'4 wide receiver. Simi Cobbs torched him, man. At, like, it might have been one of the worst one-sided matchups I saw all year. And that, can, that, that definitely throws in, like, you know, teams beating up on FCS teams. Like, he got absolutely owned in that game by Simi Cobbs. And the reason why that's, that's it's PTSD is like there's a bunch of semi cobs that he's going to have to cover in the NFL. A.J. Green, Julio Jones, really anyone that's over six, six foot three. Um, teams are going to just look at that tape and be like, all right, well, this is what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, he's not magic. You can't teach 
five inches of height. You can't teach 20 pounds of muscle. You know what I'm saying? So because of the size concerns, that's why I have him here at number three. But if we're just judging it based off of technique, uh, he probably would be number one. But uh, personally, for me, I still got that PTSD. So if, you, if you're a fan of Denzel Ward, if you're a team, I see a couple mock drafts. Have him go to the Niners, and you have him go to this and that. If you're a team that you know you you want to get Denzel Ward, just don't watch that game against Indiana and feel happy about your pick. But I, I still think he'll be a good player in the NFL and definitely has potential to be an elite nickel. Going to corner number two is going to be Carlton Davis from Auburn, six foot one, two hundred and five pounds. On the season, he had 34 tackles, one interception, and 10 pass deflections. Positives is his size, his vers his versatility is really, really good. He's just as good in man as he is in zone. He can work in any scheme. He's interchangeable. Uh, there's a, the famous quote I think I saw on a couple websites I was brought over is that Jared Stidham in practice would not just simply not throw it to his side in practice. And when you're getting that kind of respect, you know, I get a little PTSD, speaking of the semi cobs for Denzel Ward, with Nandy Asimov. I remember everyone said Nandy Asimov was so good because no one threw it to his side while he played for the Raiders, and then he got exposed in Philadelphia. So there is a little bit of that, but I think ultimately it's a different type of respect here for Carlton Davis. And I think that, uh, you know, really the only negative is, is I want to see how well he tested the combine. His tape, when you look at his tape, you can't really tell how good of an athlete he is. He's, he's more of, uh, you know, technique... You know, a technique kind of guy. He's, he's so physical in the line of scrimmage. That might actually be a negative. He might be too physical for his own good. Might draw some flags in the NFL. Uh, but ultimately, man, I'm a big fan of Carlton Davis. I think he has versatility. I think with that size, I mean, he might be able to advance you someday down the road. Think of him and consider him as a safety. His tackling ability is definitely not poor. So uh, plenty, to do, plenty to do here with Carlton Davis. But I really want to see how well he tested the combine and put some of that. Put, that, put some of that into his stock and see how high it really rises. So... Um, you know, mock drafts. I don't know where a lot of mock drafts happen right now. Kind of all over the place, second round, first round. But ultimately, I think after the combine and once a lot more tape has been dived into, he could very well be a first round player. Which is why we have him number two. Going to number one, it was always going to be Josh Jackson from Iowa, six foot one, 195 pounds on the season. He had 48 tackles, eight interceptions, two of those he brought back for touchdowns, and 18 pass deflections. When you look at the positives of Josh Jackson, best ball skills, haha, <laughs> funny joke, best ball skills in the class, excellent in zone, probably the best zone corner I really can, I really can, like, jumped off the board as, like, that guy's a zone corner. I can't really remember a time that I saw a guy that was as good in zone as he was. Um, his tape was, his tape was probably better than Marshawn Lattimore's last year, probably better than, uh, you probably wouldn't want to group in, I mean, I don't really think there's, Obviously, with that kind of production, I don't think there was even a corner last year whose tape really matched up with what Josh Jackson was able to put up. Um, when you look at the negatives, really, he just needs to be more consistent in man coverage. He's definitely not a complete corner. I wish I could say that, but there's no complete corner in this year's draft class. Even though there's lots of talent there, there's not one guy that can just do it all and is going to be the great athlete. Um, but Josh Jackson should test pretty well. I think if there's going to be a guy that might let some people down with his numbers, it could be Josh Jackson. He could be one of these guys that doesn't run as fast as people think. But I, I think he should be able to get in like the the high four fours, maybe the four fives, something like that. That's acceptable for a guy that's as rangy as he is. But the production doesn't lie. And I think Josh Jackson should be a top 15 pick in this year's draft class. It should be the guy. Then, you know, Denzel Ward's pretty much the... It's like it's either Denzel Ward or him going first in the draft. I think push comes to shove. Give me the guy that has the better chance of playing on the outside in the NFL. And that is Mr. Josh Jackson. So there you go, guys. Those are my cornerback rankings. My bronchitis is killing me. I don't. Is that something people think say? I bet you never thought that. But uh, yeah, I'm still sick. This is a longer video, but I was able to get through it. That's why I'm not as hype as I usually am, because I'm just if I if I talk too loud, my voice just goes to absolute crap. But thank you guys, anyways, for watching the top 10 corners. If you agree or disagree with anyone you saw here, let me know in the comment section below. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.